There we go. So welcome everybody and thanks for showing up again. Um, I hope you're enjoying the six week online program. I'm Jenny, for those of you who haven't met you, I manage the training programs um, for Sport Med BC. Um, Lynn is here. Um, you all know Coach Lynn, I'm sure. And we I also have Natasha Wadok um, popping in today and to our coach's corner that we decided to call it. Um, but I'm going to hand over to Lynn and she'll introduce Natasha. And then, Natasha, you are going to be coaching us today. So, over <laughs> to <Awesome>. you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Where are all your smiling faces? I'm only seeing, I'm seeing lots of. Um, non vids I'm, I love seeing all of you but anyways uh, it is good to good that you've joined us and I hope uh, you dress warmly today for your walk run it was really brisk out there today I was surprised um, uh, so my my role today is I I'm always excited to introduce the athlete that I have the privilege of coaching and uh, she's right there doing a little stretch stretch how did your 30 minute run go today by the way Oh, it was, it was great. I was going to call you because I finished at 4.30 and I was so excited because it went so well. And I haven't been running for everyone that's interested in almost eight weeks. This is my longest run. So this was very exciting for me to run 30 whole minutes without walking. <laughs> yes, which is why I wanted to start with that to set, set the stage because, of course, Natasha has the Canadian, owns the Canadian record over 10,000 meters at 31, 41 minutes, 31 minutes and 41 seconds, that is, ladies and gents, and, uh, and some change on top of that, but not much. And, um, and recently, we've had an amazing journey, um, you know, preparing for a full marathon, which Tosh ran um, with great success December the 20th. She ran totally our, our goal pace, and we, we had hoped... Uh, you know, to run, well, Olympic standard and, and much better. And she pulled off 226.19, which was really an unbelievable time. However, um, it's, been a, it's been really tough when you push yourself as hard as she did um, and just really and truly put yourself out there, the body talks to, to you. And so um, we know that it takes five to six weeks to recover from such an effort. Um, and in preparation, for that, um, you know, she knew that we'd have to recover, but those tendons were not happy even, you know, starting back again. So she's going to share some of the things that she's been going through and you can talk to the things that you might have been experiencing with the program. But the point is just that we are all athletes and what you need is a good program. You need to be able to listen to your body and pay attention to anything that might um, you know, develop, be it a small little ache or pain or worse. Um, the programs that you're following are truly built on, they are built on high performance. The learn to run program that you do was really built on uh, athletes returning to uh, running when they'd either been um, on a break of some sort or perhaps had such an ache or pain or worse yet an injury. So you're in good hands understanding that the progressions all make sense and they do work. And in fact, the walking program and the run as well as run stronger um, are based on interval training that Tosh would have completed en route to her best performances over 5K, 10K, and then the marathon, just depending on the number of repetitions we might have done. So your experiences are the same. It just it's very, very personal. And so it's important again to, um, you know, to enjoy what you're doing and to listen to your body. So Tosh is our, of course, an ambassador to the program and has joined us on our sport med team as a coach. And so I'm going to leave it with her to answer your questions, but first to maybe share a little bit of, of where she's at. And I'm so, I somehow knew your report would be good today. So <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for being here, Tosh, and all the best to all of you. I've got to fly because I'm taking a coaching course, as a matter of fact. So I'm going back to that right now. Take care. Thanks, Lynn. Okay. Bye, coach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Well, I'm really happy to be here. And uh, thanks for the intro there, Coach Lynn. So that's one thing that is really important is that you listen to your coach. Um, <laughs> I... 
I have been in contact with Lynn. I'm very fortunate. We have a close, such a close relationship almost every single day since I've been dealing with an injury um, and following her program. And um, it's really hard to be patient and it's hard not to want to, you know, rush through some of the walks and get right into the running, which is what I want to do. But you have to, um, you got to trust the program and you got to trust your coach. Um, I really live by that. Uh, otherwise, what's the point in having a coach? So, <laughs> yeah. So a um, little bit about me. Um, besides what Lynn said, I hadn't run a marathon in seven years. So we knew that training for this marathon this past um, fall was going to be risky because we were increasing mileage and increasing the runs and the intensity of the longer runs. And so, um, fortunately for me, I made it to the, the race day and it, it went better than I expected and, you know, ran that Olympic standard and everything it was really good and came home and I, I took my time off. But when I started to try and run again, it was really painful. And so we had to try and figure out what was wrong. And I have a great team of my partner happens to be an orthopedic surgeon that specializes in lower extremity. So I couldn't ask for uh, a better hookup. So I got him to examine me and I got an MRI and I have all these physios and everyone and, and RMTs and chiros and everyone's coming together and there was no real answer. That the MRI didn't show anything. It was basically just tendonitis. So when you push your body to a point where it was like, that was the be that was all I could do on on the marathon day, and I'd push myself during training, and my body just was not ready to start running again two weeks later. So we had to take two more two more weeks off. And so when I started running, I think three weeks ago, I started with you know, basically what you guys would start with when you are learning to run. I had, you know, 10 times one minute run, one minute walk every second day for the first week. And I was like, what is this? For someone that ran a marathon, <laughs> you know, five weeks earlier, I was, I was doing this and it was, it was hard, but that's how you have to start because you're, you know, it, get, it also gives me a whole new level of respect for what you guys are going through. Cause I forget how hard it is to start running again. It's your whole body just needs to learn to run again. Things hurt in weird places. And uh, so that's why we do this slow, gradual build into it. And um, I had, I got to 20 minutes a few days ago without walking. And that was after about two and a half weeks of, of course, my build up to the run without walking is much quicker than your guys is because of where I am, but I still have to build through the, through the walk program. And two full weeks where I had to walk all the time and even just running yesterday for 20 minutes, um, I was labored and I was running four 45 kilometers and I ran 42 kilometers at 328 kilometers seven weeks ago. And it was, it was kind of like a smack in the face, like how, you know, just really makes me appreciate health and, um, how lucky we are to to run and to do what we do here um and so yeah i am building back up and so i get to run 30 minutes i have a day off tomorrow and then 30 minutes again and then we'll see but the injury has been really tough and uh um there's been tears and uh i'm very fortunate to have a great coach in lynn who is more like a friend to me and which is, you know, one of the reasons I'm so successful as an athlete is because I have such an amazing coach who has guided me for the last four years and treats me as a human being first beside, before being an athlete, if you know what that means. So my emotions, my well-being, my mental health are priority number one, and then success as an athlete comes next. So um, like, for example, um, my cat that I had for 12 years got diagnosed with lymphoma uh, about a week before I was supposed to leave for the marathon. And I was just beside myself. I am a huge cat lady. I was so upset. I said to Lynn, if I, I, I said, I, if I have to get him put down, like the day before I leave, that was the day we had, I don't think I can 
I don't think I can run. I, I really don't think I can go and run a marathon when I'm, and she, her first thing was, well, you don't have to run. It wasn't like a hum or a haw. It was, no, if you, you know what, you've done the build, I'm really proud of you. And, but you know, I'm not, you're, you're not going to race if, if you're not ready and you're not. So that was really special for her to see me like that and to be there for me in that respect and not be like, no, you have to race. Like, don't worry about your cat. But anyways, my cat pulled through for four weeks. He got on some miracle drug. Unfortunately, he did pass three weeks ago, but um, fortunate for that time. And now I have foster cats that I learned right before this call. Um, they're, they uh, are mine now. I'm adopting them. So I have friends, <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I hummed and hawed. This is totally not about the running, but I'm a huge cat person anyway. So now I have two seven-month-old kittens. So anyway. Oh, God. I have a question, Natasha. Yeah. So um, do you have, like, how have, have you learned any mental skills? Or how do, you, how do you mentally cope with the hardship that you have been going through kind of returning after the marathon? And like, do you have any coping method mechanisms or, um, yeah, mentally, like how, how, yeah, that's, do a, you that's cope? A, because it's hard, right? <laughs> that is a great question. Yeah. You know what? I haven't had an injury that's taken me out for longer than three days for the last four years. So, you know, with the Olympics in August and with the 10,000 meter Canadian championships in May, I'm so I was sort of freaked out like I'm not going to be ready and all this stuff and and this is really really hard like I'm still walking and I wanted to rush it and I had a few days where I just sort of felt sorry for myself and moped around and like got frustrated and cried and then you know I realized this is not doing anything for me none of the things that I'm feeling right now are benefit me in any way, shape or form. All I can do is what I'm doing is listen to my coach, do the program, trust all these people and take it one day at a time. And hopefully I'll be back. And that has really helped me just to be like, you know, there is progress every day. It's slow, but there's progress every day. So that I call it two steps forward, one step back. So I'm still moving forward, even if it's slowly. And sometimes I'm going back. I'm always going forward and just sort of being grateful that I am getting better and that there is progress has, has helped as well. But um, yeah, stressing about the rush to return really didn't do anything except keep me up at night. And so I've tried to really just relax and, and do what I can and trust in my support team. So, but mm -hmm. there are days where I feel, you know, you look on social media and you look on Strava and you see what everyone else is doing. And it makes me like, well, I need to get back. I need to be doing that. But our, our motto with Lynn has always been, we follow our own path. We do our own thing. Our road to the marathon was not conventional. It wasn't what most people normally do. I supplemented my extra runs with the elliptical four days a week. So we have always done our own thing. We've done our own followed our own path. And so that's what I need to do now is just keep doing what we're doing and, and stay positive and know that I will be back. And I try to think of all the things that I tell other athletes when they're injured. <laughs> because I'm always like, yeah, like you, this is just going to make you stronger when you get back because you're going to be so grateful to be healthy. And so I'm like, all right, like tell yourself those things. So <laughs> yeah. maybe um, cause I know you, as you mentioned, you used the elliptical quite a lot, like in your regular program as well. And I, I seem to remember a while back, you were telling the story that from injuries in your past, you kind of had to learn, um, that, that is what's going to keep you healthy, um, uh, mm -hmm. when other athletes might run more consistently in their program, you are adding in elliptical instead, for example, am I right? Yeah, we just yeah. tried to um, reduce the impact on my body. So a lot of when you're running big mileage and you have to run twice a day, the idea of these second runs is really just to get your engine going. So that doesn't, you know, there needs to be wear and tear on the body for the marathon. But at the end of the day, you can do it on the elliptical because it 
it's sort of the same motion, but not the same impact on your body. And it was sort of a test doing this marathon. Could we get away with doing this? And the answer is yes, because I ran really well. Ultimately, yes, I have an injury, but I think that would have happened no matter what. I've had tendonitis for years and years and years. And it's always been like just on the border of being sometimes too much. And the marathon just, she's an angry tendon now. She's very angry. <laughs> yeah. That answers your question. Yes. I guess um, I just wanted to bring in a little bit of cross training for those who might, um, or the subject of cross training, for those who might feel like the pounding the payment is too much, or um, even if you could just. Um, talk about the importance of of adding alternative methods such as the yeah absolutely or... biking is great too um Dana Pitorowski who is our uh, other marathoner going that's going to the Olympics and Melindy Elmore the other marathoners are the three the two best marathoners in Canada they cycle all the time and they have they cycle outside and they cycle inside so that's also a great great way if you're like you know what I've been running a lot my shins are a little sore you know, whatever, hop on the bike and, and do like a, you can put up your computer or your iPad and you can do a Zwift thing, or whatever. You can ride in London with your little iPad or even on your phone, I think these days. It's incredible what you can do with technology. And I think sometimes too, that it's, there's a mental gain to that as well. Cause sometimes you're just like, I don't feel like running today. It's raining and I'd rather just go and bike on the trainer and that's okay like go and and do that that's fine like i think that's good for everybody and uh a cross training is really important and swimming is great too i mean it's different muscles um but it's still an, a good form of cardio if you like to swim it's great a lot of people like to cross train with swimming so runners that i know mm -hmm. i want to make sure that if any of you who is on this call have any questions um, to Natasha or just want some advice on how your training is going, you can either raise your hand or, or I've opened the, the group chat um, box and we can answer your questions one by one. But we'd like to hear from you how you guys are doing too. Yes, I'm here to answer questions okay. and help give you guys guidance. Because it is kind of hard, like are you often training on your own or I mean because most of the people here I'm assuming might be training on their own because we can't yet have groups back together so how do you like how do you motivate yourself going out training yeah mm -hmm. and then there's another there's a couple of questions there that I will yep. get to um yeah you know what during the marathon I I train on my own always it's just me I'm fortunate that I I get to do some of my easy runs with some local Vancouver girls that are quite quick but as you guys know, with COVID, there's been no group get togethers. And I, even for high performance athlete, the rule since September was you weren't allowed to train outside your group, which I thought was a little unfair because my group is me, which meant I was not allowed to train or do workouts with anybody else. So I was seeing groups of like 10 that were all still doing workouts together because they were a high performance group, but I wasn't allowed. It was weird. Anyways, it taught me to be really tough. And I went out there and I did all these marathon workouts without anyone pacing me. So I knew no matter what, I could run what I needed to run. I wasn't being paced by anybody. Um, and I had people biking with me for all my big workouts. I was really fortunate that Coach Lynn, she made lots of videos. I don't know if you guys have seen any of them. <laughs> um, some of them are like five minutes long of her making a video of me on the bike and she's like talking about my form to you guys like all right do you see her arm carriage here and look at the la la and at one point i think it was near the end of one of my workouts and i was like it hurts i'm tired and something like that she's like just keep going <laughs> it, was, it was funny but um it's, it was really nice to have lynn there for the big workouts and uh, my partner would hop on the bike with me and um i had another couple that were really close family friends. They came out and also biked with me and helped do that. So that was really nice. And sometimes that can be really helpful when you're doing everything alone is to have your partner or a friend hop on the bike if they're not a runner. And, and do that. it's a nice way to get to spend time with somebody too during COVID now when you can't 
So that's what I've been doing to see my friends is because I'm not running. I've just been going for walks, which I'm sure a lot of you have, because that's the only way we can see people. But um, if you're, yeah, definitely getting a friend to bike with you is helpful. Um, or just like one run, run buddy um, is all you really need. Groups are, are hard right now. And it is nice to be in a group because you get to, I mean, we all miss that, right? I mean, it's yeah, the afterwards and like having the, the chatter and maybe having a glass of wine or I guess beer. I don't know what most people drink beer after group runs, cookies, coffee. Anyways. Anything you want. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks. Okay. Uh, do you want, do you want to pull up the, ch yeah. on the chat box, right? Okay. Yeah. So Tracy, hi, Tracy. I can't see you, but you have asked, what have you found works for you with your nutrition to make sure you are successful? That is the question I get asked the most from run runners, run groups is a lot about my nutrition. Um, and one of the things that I always say is there's a reason why I'm 39 years old and I have been competing since I was 12 and I'm, I'm still improving because I'm very fortunate that I've never had any issues with, with food and that I've always maintained balance and had um, just a good, healthy relationship with food. And in distance running, especially female elite distance running, the odds of me having developed an eating disorder at this stage are pretty high. So I'm, I'm very proud of myself that I have learned that and always and you know push that food is fuel and so um you can you know indulge in treats and the things that you want but the number one thing for me is is fueling my body first in the way that it needs and then if i've done that i can have you know the ice cream or the cookies or the wine or whatever but um I'm really good about making sure I have breakfast every single, every single day before I run. So if I'm going to run longer than 40 minutes, I will always have something. And my guideline is, um, and you can do it however you want, is 250 calories is pretty much what you need to have in your system before you run 30 minutes to an hour. So that to me is uh, toast, peanut butter, and banana, and a coffee. And that is enough that I can go for a run and do a workout, but not too much that I'm going to feel like I have a cramp or something within an hour. Because when you get up, you don't really want to sit around for two hours before you run. So for me, I can't have two pieces. I have to have one. So I have two pieces of bread, I'll feel sick and bloated. So it's kind of trial and error. So I have that every day. A lot of people will have, you know, oatmeal with banana, whatever, something simple, keep it in that range if you're going to be running within an hour. Um, if you have longer than you can, and you have a solid stomach, you can eat whatever you want. I mean, Regan Yee, she's amazing. She'll have like eggs and bacon and bagels before a workout blows my mind. I mean, <laughs> that's more like something to have afterwards. And another, another key is if you're doing something, a workout that's, um, you know, you've, you've been out there for longer than 30 minutes, you want to make sure that you're, you're getting in something within 15 minutes of finishing, um, something that's half carb, half protein. So um, whatever that may be, uh, a really good one if you're in a car and you're, you don't have, you know, you can have half, sometimes I'll just have half a protein bar because I don't want the whole thing and I don't like the way it sits in my stomach or whatever, or a shake, um, a little Greek yogurt, those are great too. Um, because you, you always don't have time to make a, a big meal. And so sometimes let's have like a smoothie or whatever. Um, but my go-to when I'm home, if I'm running and I come right home, I have um, a yogurt bowl. That's what I love. So I have full fat Greek yogurt with banana, berries, and granola. And so you're getting carbs, you're getting fruit, you're getting protein, um, dairy, all these things that, and you have to eat things that you like. So if you're trying to eat, you know, be nutritious, but you hate the things that you're eating. It's, you're never going to maintain that. It's not going to be successful. So that's why I'm, I'm not a big salad person. 
So you're not going to see me eating salads at lunch, but that might be your thing. Like some runners love to have salads and chickens and whatever. Um, Genevieve Lalonde, she's our steeplechase record holder. She'll have like two sandwiches. Like all of, all of the women that are very successful in our sport eat a lot. And they understand that when they've just had a whole exertion and of – They've worked so hard, they need to restore their muscles. So they're getting in that protein and that carb right after a workout. So that's really important to make sure that you are eating, you know, 15 minutes is good, but anywhere within the, an hour, let's say. But if you're going, like if you're thinking, oh, I just worked out and I want to lose weight, so I'm not going to eat for a few hours. That's totally de not good. It's defeating the purpose. Your body going to eat the muscle. And you want the muscle. You want to lose the fat. So anyways, I'm not an expert. I'm not a nutritionist. I just know that um, you do have to eat things that have carbs and proteins, equal balance after and before you want to have to get the carbs in, get, get that in and snacks throughout the day. And don't, don't feel guilty about, I don't feel guilty about eating cookies and chocolate and things like that because this is my life. This is my career. And but I also don't want to have a career or a life where I can't have a glass of wine or I can't have cookies. So we have made it work and I work hard and my body is what it is and it runs fast. So I don't know, I kind of jammed on. I don't know if I do have any more specific questions about nutrition, but I am, you know, I do eat healthy dinners as well and, and pretty good, but I also, you know, once a week we'll have a burger and fries and you know, the, mayo dip and all that stuff <laughs> pizza yeah okay what was the other question christy what do you think about while you are actually running especially when you're starting again and struggling wow that's a good question um well i'd love to listen to music when i run if i'm not running with somebody so that helps maybe drown out some of the thoughts, but uh, <laughs> I, I think about the future a lot and I think about, um, you know, ex the excitement of doing workouts again. And I think about, you know, racing in the Olympics. I'm constantly thinking about future runs and, and, and trying to actually, during these shorter runs, I'm really going through things in my head like, okay, like where, where are your shoulders? Are they up here? Like relax your shoulders and bring your arms in more. And how are you feeling here? And so sometimes I'm just checking in with my form and my breath and my body and, and things like that. But I think like everyone, you know, you end up wandering off and thinking about what you want to have for dinner or, you know, like what did, I can't believe Clara said that to Jody or whatever, you know, so, <laughs> or me reminiscing about the, uh, the Bachelor or whatever, Bridgerton. <laughs> I think I think about many things like everybody. So it's nice to run with my partner so we he can chat with me and it's it's nice to do that. So I think I didn't I think you might be in Lynn that was talking about this, but you so let's take the marathon for example, and when you start getting really hard and tough towards the end. I I think Lynn mentioned that you had kind of like a checklist that you went through in your mind to kind of persevere um so let's say someone is taking up running and starting up running again have a run for a long time and my finding it hard to uh, i see to yeah. keep going like are there any trips little tricks or tips that you would say like maybe just to to keep the momentum or to get them through like yes yes so there's a few few tips and tricks that i have so one thing is to find um like a phrase that you, you pick that works for you, that connects with you, that, that is your positivity, your drive, what makes you push. And so I have written mine down. So mine is, yes, you can, and this is your race. So those are my positive affirmations that um, when the negative thoughts come in and when things start to hurt, I immediately, it comes naturally now, yes, I can. Yes, I can. This is your day. This is your race. Like you can do this. And so I'm, I'm, sometimes I actually yelled it out loud in the marathon. I swore actually 
consciousness. This is my effing race. So you have to do, you know, you have to really, and it works. It really does. When you, when you translate those negative thoughts that are, I, I'm so tired. This is so hard. I can't do this. Like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to stop. Like, oh, you're, you haven't trained well enough for this. You're not ready. Those are all the thoughts that are going to come in that you guys may go through. So you need to remember that positive phrase and, and then, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You know, I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. I'm a rock star. Literally like a train going through your head. And it's amazing the difference that it makes to just repeat positive words in your head. And then with, with Lynn and I, we had gone over what I was going to do when it started to really hurt because I knew that no matter how fit I was and it was going to come to a point in the marathon where my, my was just going to be so hard. And that's where you decide, are you strong enough mentally? Can you push through the pain? Can you, is it your day? And sometimes it, I haven't been able to do that. And because it's a hard thing, it's hard to run through pain, but you have to mentally prepare for it. And, and you have to realize that it's, you know, in the marathon or in any, any, you want to see gains in running, there's going to be interval training, there's going to be times where it is going to hurt and you have to choose to work through it. So you just have to think of, and so Len and I prepared these phrases and we prepared the checklist. So the checklist was when it starts to hurt, I want you to think about where are your arms? You know, are they like this? I want you to relax your shoulders. I want to bring them down. So that's like, you know, that takes 30 seconds. Where are your arms? Okay, there you go. That's good. Where's your pelvis? What are you doing with your core? You know, is it, is your, are you, your, are you tucked in? Are you out? Like, what are you doing with your feet? Okay, now just go one, two, one, two, one, two. What are you doing with your breath? So we had all these things to go through to think about when my body started to hurt, well, why and what can we fix to just make it a little bit easier? So that was really helpful because I was able to sort of be like, okay, like going through all these things and help to relax me and distract me. So I continued to go through that. And then there's the one that a lot of people do is to break something down. So let's say you're in the last 10 minutes or the last 3K or whatever it may be. Um, you, you can just say, okay, I'm going to get through the next two minutes, break it down into two minutes or whatever, or lampposts. I'm going to get to that lamppost. Okay. That's great. Now I'm going to get to that like car over there and like breaking it down into chunks. So for me, it was one K at a time in the last seven K. So breaking it down. Okay. That was, you, you're all right. Okay. Get through one more kick. Okay. You're still okay. So that helps to breaking it down, which is what I did in workouts a lot is I would break it down like my big runs into 5k segments. So if I had like a 25k progression run, I would say 5k at a time. And that really helped instead of thinking, holy cannoli, like 25k is a really long time to run really hard. So breaking things down in, into chunks that you can handle is works well. So those are some of my tips when you're struggling. Um, I think everyone tonight should write down their positive phrase that they want to use helps to write it down <laughs> and to actually take the time to visualize yourself saying that when it gets hard and believing that you can push you can do it you can hear my voice yes you can yes you can <laughs> okay next question is that it no do hi this is karen hello karen do you strength train in the gym? How often do you strength train? What kind of routine do you do? Okay. Um, yes, I strength train, strength train, <laughs> strength train uh, twice a week. Um, I'm very lucky that we have a little mini gym downstairs. So that's where my elliptical is. And, and we got, um, we have some bands and a plyo box and some free weights, which at the end of the day is enough for anyone. Most people are able to do all their stuff still at home. So yeah, I have a strength coach that I work with and he works directly with my physio and they've created a great program for me. And I do zoom sessions with him once a week and then I'm on my own once a week, but that has always been a big part of what I've done. Um, I've had a strength coach for the last five years and you know, you, it's definitely, I think, worthwhile to spend the money initially to get a program, to get someone, get eyes on you to make sure you're doing it right. 
because if you're doing all these things wrong, you can injure yourself or you just, you can get frustrated and not want to do it because you're like, well, I don't even know what I'm doing. And what am I even doing? I'm probably doing it wrong. So that's a nice thing to do um, is to get someone to get you a program that you find reasonable, that you can say, I can do that on my own. Because if, if you're like, that's, I, that, that was confusing or I don't, like you're never going to do it. So keep it simple. Um, 45 minutes. You could even get 30 minutes twice a week, basic body weight kind of stuff. And it's really important because it helps, you know, you get your glutes strong and your core. Those are really important for running. So if those are weak, you're, you might get injured and you're like, you're not going to run as, as fast. You're not going to feel as good. So you want to make sure your body is um, strong in all the right places. So strength training is definitely important. Yes. I used to do yoga as well, but I, I kind of let that go because I liked hot yoga and we can't do hot yoga anymore. So <laughs> yes. Okay. I think that was that it. Are there any resources on running form for someone starting out? Oh man. Lynn has posted like a million on here. Isn't she? Jenny? Um, I can make sure there's a video in the newsletter coming, going out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Lynn is the queen of all of the uh, running form videos and where to start and this and that. So I think Lynn, all... yeah, she has some, she has some videos. I'm, I'm sure I can. Yeah. yeah. Give us some quick tips. Quick tips. Okay. On running form. On running like form. The, okay. The five, give us three pointers or something like that to think of. <gasps> think of okay um well number one you need to make sure you're wearing appropriate footwear so that's important but that's not running form so you want to make sure that your hands are like basically like you're loose loosely holding candlesticks so you don't want to be like clenching your fist because if you're clenching your fist your whole upper body is tight and that's not good so nice nice loose nice relaxed shoulders and just a simple easy arm carriage. They can be slightly going in front of you. You can't really see. And that's another important thing is you want to make sure you're very kind of running up tall and straight, but it can be tricky because you don't want to be up tall and arching your back like this, because then that's going to be hurting. So you always want to, you know, be careful that your, your feet are coming underneath you. You're, you know, you're, you're just light on your feet. Your arms are nice and everything is you want to try and just relax your arms because the tighter you are up here, I find a lot of people do that. And then they're really swaying their body. So nice and relaxed like this, light on your feet coming right under your body. It's hard when I'm on here. It's easier to show, to show you guys these things and going over, over things like, you know, making sure your core is engaged, things like that, uh, which is why it's important to do some of the, um, of the strength training it's easier when i can see people and then they go for a run and i'm like okay this is what you need to change but with just talking to you guys it's kind of hard to uh to tell you how to run something yeah. so simple yet there are some technical parts to it yeah in the <clears throat> newsletter we sent that i think it was week two um lynn was demonstrating how to do the abcs mm -hmm. so when you talk about how the foot is landing right underneath you when you're running, mm -hmm. would you suggest that that would be something good to practice? Yeah. So just like the basic walking A's and the running A's are just simple mechanics to teach you to sort of engage those, those to get that running form, engage the core, get your, you know, your shoulders back and, and you're going just up and then your legs going right underneath you. So these general drills, I do them still all the time. Um, it, it, to build strength. It's, it's great. Um, so those are good for people to learn sort of the basics and things like that. So it's easier to, to, uh, show you guys, obviously. I'll send out a video tomorrow. There you go. Okay. Yeah. I think you have one more question. Where are your favorite places in the lower mainland to train? Well, I like to run on soft surface a lot. Um, that's one other thing that I think has been my saving grace and not being injured the past four years is that I run about 85% of my mileage on softer surfaces instead of the pavement. It can be quite hard on your body. 
I know not everybody has the time to drive to the trails or it's dark when you're running. And I totally get that. So um, one great place to run, I live on the North Shore, especially like if it's darker out, is the waterfront. You know, we park by the Spa Utopia and you can run all the way to West Vancouver along but a bit of a, it's called the, I think it's called the Pacific Spirit Trail. Spirit Trail, that's, Jenny, you live in North Bend, you know what it's called. And I didn't even, I didn't even know that it now went from the key all the way, they, they put a tunnel in. Did you see that? There's a tunnel. All this, I used to live in those float homes. There was never a tunnel. Anyways, it's great. And it's a nice, it's flat, so it's nice. And you can have someone bike with you. So that's a nice one and it's lit up. So that's easy breezy, good to find every day kind of a trail. Um, my go-to is Stanley Park. Um, I love running in the trails there. But I do not recommend going in there by yourself if you're not familiar with the trails. Um, definitely have someone go with you because you could get lost and it's not exactly a safe place to get lost in. Um, so I'm very familiar with the trails, so I'm good. But I also, you know, if I run with music, I have the hear through on so I can hear my surroundings. Apparently there's been like coyote attacks in there. Weird, people are feeding them? <laughs> Anyways. There's big signs up that are like, don't feed the coyotes. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I also love running Burnaby Lake. Um, it's one of my favorite trails. Uh, that's, I don't know if you guys know where that is. It's right by Fortius. So right where, where Sport Med BC offices were. So that's a nice 10K loop around. You don't even have to, you can go out and back, but it's, it's a beautiful soft trail. It's really nice there. And of course, I mean, the seawall is pretty epic. Um, easy to do if you want to just go and not worry about traffic and just go out there. Sometimes I run in the bike lane and I get yelled at, but whatever. I'm running faster than the bikes half the time. So, <laughs> and I love the Pacific Spirit Trail out by UBC as well. Um, Pacific Spirit Park. That's a great one. Also confusing. I still get lost in there, but beautiful. So Man, there's so many great places to run. Running along Jericho towards Spanish Banks. It's like three and a half K. So nice on a nice day. And they're usually filming some sort of movie down there. So you can maybe get to see a famous person. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure you guys have run on some of those spots, but those are those are my go-tos. Awesome. Thank you. I think if no one else has any questions, we'll wrap it up. Let everyone go and have dinner. Yes, dinner time. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to join us and speak to us. And we'll see more, more of you in the spring. Oh. Yes. Hopefully we will be back together sometime in the spring. Yes. I would, I would love that uh, in whatever capacity we can, we can do it in. So everybody stay strong and and we will get through this and re running and we're very lucky to be able to still go out and run with a friend so yeah take advantage of that but that one is friend until to we friends yes um yeah. until we can have big clinics again mm -hmm. they're coming but great thank you so much thank you good night have everybody a good night. take care bye take care bye